we're very glad to uh, come together to worship the Lord in his presence. We believe that uh, Jesus' promise is true, where two or three gather in my name, there I am in their midst. And we believe that the Lord is here according to his promise, and we sit in his promise to offer our worship and praise, but also to hear from him. There are a number of intimations already on the screen. You must have seen uh, um, one or two things that I need to remind you. Um, the first thing that uh, uh, I think Wilf's name was on it as well. Wilf was in hospital and still I, I believe in hospital. I have visited him a few times. Um, so he is, was in with chest infection and uh, it seems to be uh, not bad at all. Uh, so um, continue to pray for him, pray for Jim, and all other people who are on our list, uh, so that God uh, stretch, stretches out his mighty and healing hand upon them. Um, there will be um, ADM, um, as we have been announcing, um, immediately after uh, this service and so please uh, stay for that. There will be uh, um, Wednesday Bible study. Uh, we, can't, we, we call it uh, um, Learning Together program or Learning Together group and we will be uh, starting uh, a new book uh, uh, which is called Mere Christianity Reimagined discovering the faith for the 21st century. So it seems um, uh, an interesting book uh, because it um, attempts to um, make the Christian faith relevant for the 21st century. Of course, truths uh, don't change. We just see their relevance for every generation in a, in a different way. And so I would encourage uh, all of you, if uh, you have time by Wednesday evening, seven o'clock, then do join in this group uh, so that we can discuss many things in detail uh, while we can't uh, discuss here this uh, in the morning uh, because we have uh, limited time. But there uh, we can uh, come up with all our questions and we can discuss together. If you know anybody who would like to join that uh, Learning Together group, please do uh, let them know and also to us. This Wednesday, however, it will be online. Um, I have a meeting this Wednesday in Glasgow, so I wouldn't be around, but other people will meet online uh, and uh, uh, you all can join in if you so wish. Um, we have been also um, intimating this uh, King's Coronation Party. Uh, it will be 7th of May. Uh, immediately after the service will be lunch. Uh, we have had a good response so far and uh, would like more people to come and join uh, this party. Uh, so it will be in the main halls after the service uh, on 7th of May. Um, and then there will be tea and coffee after the ATM, uh, uh, so we can go through this main hall and uh, I cannot report what selection is there because I didn't have a chance to see it, but by faith, I believe it will be good. So come along for that tea and coffee. I think these are the things that I need to remind you. If there is anything, please do remind me and I'll announce that. Um, if not, let us turn our attention to worshipping God and we worship God uh, with our hearts full, full, filled with joy and gladness. It's in today's mission praise number 147, fill your hearts with joy and gladness. If you are able to stand, please do so, but don't feel obliged.
Let us now speak to God and we offer our praise to him and Marlon to lead us in this prayer. Loving Heavenly Father, we come together in the quietness to think of you and to give thanks and praise for all you have blessed us with. You have given us families, fullness of life, friends and a community to live in. You guide and inspire us. You cover us with your grace each and every day. As we journey through the Easter season, we think of how you sent your spirit to the disciples who were struggling to believe all the events that had happened. Dear Father, form us in the likeness of your son Jesus, who died and rose again for each of us. Deepen our love for you and help us to be strong and joyful witnesses of your gospel in a world of fragile peace and brokenness. Loving Heavenly God, renew our hearts through your Holy Spirit that when we come to you in humble prayer, we have the faith to hear your quiet encouragement. Give to each of us the courage to share that faith with others we meet in our daily lives. In faith and confidence, we join together now, saying the words of the prayer our Saviour taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. And forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil for the kingdom the power and the glory are yours now and forever amen once again we worship god and this time we sing mission praise number 600 um, sing to god new songs of worship all his deeds are marvelous. Let us sing together.
Our reading this morning is taken from the Gospel according to John chapter 20, starting from verse 19 to 29. Let us hear God's word. It was late that Sunday evening, and the disciples were gathered together behind locked doors because they were afraid of the Jewish authorities. Then Jesus came and stood among them. Peace be with you, he said. After saying this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were filled with joy at seeing the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so I send you. Then he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive people's sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. One of the twelve disciples, Thomas, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. Thomas said to them, Unless I see the scars of the nails in his hands and put my finger on those scars and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, the disciples were together again indoors and Thomas was with them. The doors were locked, but Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and look at my hands. Then reach out your hand and put it in my side. Stop your doubting and believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Do you believe because you see me? How happy are those who believe without seeing me? Amen, and may God add his blessing to this reading from his holy word. Speak to me that I may speak. Let us ask God to speak to us through his word as we sing mission praise number 444. Lord, speak to me that I may speak.
from our reading this morning you might have realized this is yet another post resurrection encounter with disciples jesus rose and he met with disciples on different occasions Bruce Larson uh, once said the events of Easter cannot be reduced to a creed or a philosophy we are not asked to believe the doctrine of the resurrection we are asked to meet this person raised from the dead in faith we move from belief in a doctrine to a knowledge of a person so ultimately truth is a person we met him he is alive that is the testimony of the eye witnesses so in other words there are many faiths we based based on philosophy or ideas and, and then they have doctrines for christians the truth is not mere an idea or a philosophy it is the person and we meet him in faith the historical fact of the resurrection of jesus is not something that is based on a mere story or hallucination or a philosophy as i said it is based on i witnesses accounts from people who saw touched and ate with him after his resurrection i must say it was not easy for some to believe the news of the resurrection now here I want to mention that there are number of disciples as the women took the news to the disciple this afraid and terrified disciples they did not believe them they said these are just mere stories fables and so two of them ran out peter and john to find out for themselves they did not find jesus body and we are told that peter went back scratching his head trying to make sense of the events it doesn't say that they believed for some however when jesus appeared to them the first time it was rather easier for them to believe without much persuasion for others such as thomas it was difficult he didn't want to just believe what the crowd believed he wanted to find things for himself and for that very reason he has been given or labeled as doubting thomas or thomas i think that history has been unfair with him others will doubted just the same he wanted to find things for himself and i like that i would rather call him a realist uh, uh, thomas rather than doubting thomas if the truth be told we are all a lot like thomas so in next few minutes i want to um, you know highlight some of the things uh that jesus did with thomas in order for him to move from his uncertainty to belief and faith in his resurrection now thomas was one of jesus disciples who was not half-hearted man in john 11 jesus said that they should return to the land of judea or hell country of judea in order to raise lazarus who had died and on this suggestion the disciples objected to jesus uh, idea why because the last time they were there in uh, in that area jesus was nearly arrested and so disciples said that was not a good idea 
However, it was Thomas who said, let us go and die with him. He was not a half-hearted man. Maybe that was, uh, well, as you can say, is a pessimistic way of looking at things, but I would say he was a very devoted man to Jesus. He was not half-hearted. And that is not about lack of faith or doubt. It was pure devotion. You see, some people have to come face to face with the truth before they believe. How many of us are like that? There are quite a number of us, don't they? You see, Thomas was missing when Jesus appeared to the other disciples. We don't know where was he and why he was missing. However, when he returns, the other disciples tell him, we have seen the Lord. And his response to my mind, rightly, his response is, I won't believe it unless I see. See the nail wounds in his hands and his feet. And I put my finger in his scars. Now that doesn't mean to say that Jesus would still have the scars or wounds in his body. The glorified body, I believe, wouldn't have these things. That was his way of saying, I want to see the reality. I want to see with my own eyes before I believe. You see, no one else in the entire New Testament make these kind of demands before believing. So in that sense alone, Thomas stands out. He was so certain of the death of Jesus that he would not credit the report of his reappearance and instead that he would not believe unless he could actually touch Jesus' body. Thomas would not be satisfied by uh, just mere stories. He wanted to see material evidence, empirical evidence. You see, eight days later, they were together again. The doors were locked and all of a sudden, there Jesus stands in their midst. And so he addresses Thomas. He says, put your finger here and look at my hands. Put your hand into the wound in my side. Jesus knew that Thomas had said, uh, you know, what he had said. I think that would have given him something to think about. He just said that to the disciples. How on earth Jesus knew that? That would have been a, a rather surprising start of this interaction. I think we all have our own uncertainties and doubts. Why not verbalize them? Why do we keep these in sight. You see, God doesn't mind. Sometimes we reduce God uh, into a, something really a temperamental uh, kind of person who would just go off the rail if we say something. He doesn't mind. Our doubts are nothing new for him. I think this is the first way to deal with our doubts. And that's how Jesus dealt with Thomas. Come, see, find out for yourself. Bring it on. I believe that God respects honesty. And he rather would like to hear from us what we think, rather than don't say it and try to pretend that we are all okay. You see, I often say to people, you know, you can, you, can, you can deceive yourself and other people. How can we deceive God? As pure hypocrisy, if we try to sing his praises, we don't feel anything in our hearts. And so, if he knows already all of it, 
How do we think we can hide things from him? And so that's why I say, verbalize them. In the book of Psalms, Psalmist openly and very bravely speak what they think. I think that the doubt that Thomas expressed is said well in this quote. His doubt had a purpose. Thomas wanted to know the truth. His doubt gives evidence not a lack of faith, but of a desire to have faith founded in fact, not fantasy. You see, many of us uh, tend to just believe uh, the stories that we have heard and never have a personal encounter with Jesus. And so we believe what others told us. Sometimes it's good to believe. But I think if the questions that we have they are for the purpose of knowing more and knowing facts that that should not be labeled as a lack of faith. And so Jesus deals with uh, Thomas doubt by inviting him to find out for himself. Secondly, Jesus dealt with a doubt uh, uh, in this way. He said, okay, you want to find out things for yourself? Come on, come to me. He didn't say go out and find things for yourself. He said, come to me. Come and find out. That is a, it's an invitation like Jesus said in the Gospel of Matthew. All of you who are weary and burdened, come to me and I will give you rest. It is coming to God than, uh, rather than running away from him that we find the truth. Many a times people run away from God, say, oh, we don't believe anymore because we don't believe God exists, and then they run away from him and try to find the truth. I can tell you, you can find the truth only when the truth is there. We meet that person and not mere ideas. And so Jesus says, touch me, I can stand up to your scrutiny. Don't hide your doubts. Let him know what we feel and be willing to seek some answers about them. You see, Josh McDowell is an excellent apologist. He has written many books. Um, and uh, he, he says uh, many good things about Jesus' resurrection. And Lee Strobel as another apologist. Uh, who's a good way of putting faith into uh, 21st century uh, context. So if you want to read them, I would strongly encourage you to read these two authors. But if we are not sure ourselves sometimes, ask around. Ask me sometimes. I like questions. I don't mind. That's what I do when I teach. Sometimes 100, 150 people sitting there for two hours quizzing. Now I don't claim to know everything. <coughs> None of us can. But it's good to reflect together on things. You see, <coughs> Jesus said, No, I should have. <clears throat> Seek and you shall find. <clears throat> Knock and <clears throat> the door will be opened unto you. And you see, <clears throat> whenever we earnestly and honestly seek 
than we do find. And First Chronicles chapter 28 verse 9 says, If you seek him, he will be found by you. And Malachi says, Tell me in this, go ahead, find, bring your questions. And you see, if we still have questions, then we can talk to God directly and say, I have trouble with this. I get, it doesn't make sense to me. Can you please help me? What did Jesus say? I go to my father, I send you the second helper who would remind you what, have, what I have taught you. He will be within you. And so, I think Thomas is not a doubting Thomas. He is a realist and he has the audacity and courage to verbalize what he thinks. And that's a good quality to have. You see, I, I become very weary of those people who smile but they think something different. And we all of us do, don't we? We should. Because you can never see what they think. I would rather have people who say things straight. I might not like them sometimes. <laughs> but it's better to know. It's better to know your enemies than to have your enemies around and you never know them. And so having doubt is not a bad thing. It's better to verbalize them. The third way Jesus dealt with, uh, 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 if we want to call doubting disciple, is this. He welcomed him and others. He didn't really scold Thomas, say, you stupid, you don't understand. Oh, uh, through my ministry, I have been telling you that I will die and I will come back and you still don't believe? He didn't say anything. He didn't call him names. No, he simply said, stop doubting. And that's another way of in Greek, it means it's a continuing action. Do not keep on doubting. Do not become an unbeliever. Good to have doubt, but it should have a purpose to find out the truth. Yes, doubts will lead us away if we don't check upon them. But these questions and uncertainties, once they are resolved, they will make us stronger and better believers. Once we have read and prayed and studied and sought God, the doubts could vanish and we are left with more rock solid faith. Jesus doesn't mind our questions as I've said earlier. He is big enough to handle our questions and our fears. His ego is not so fragile as we sometimes make it out to be. He seeks honest people and honest children. And we cannot ruin his day. No. He might grow impatient with people who don't want to believe, but believers who struggle with questions and doubts do not try his patience. Like the man who said to Jesus, I believe, help me overcome my belief. And so, we should pray and be honest. Lord, I trust you. But there are things that don't make sense to me. Help me work them out. Help me reach a point where I am okay with the answer I have. Help me in my quest to follow you with all my heart, with all my mind. These things 
we should openly say to him. His reaction to the risen Christ is also uh, very profound, I mean Thomas. Once he believes, his reaction is, my Lord, my God. That's a powerful truth that comes out of Thomas's mouth as he encounters the reality and truth. You see, he is not again half-hearted. He goes all the way, says, my God, my Lord. I know at times we, we really can identify with Thomas. We have doubts and we want to know something uh, for ourselves. Uh, especially when nobody's word is good enough, we want to investigate ourselves. And that's a good thing, never a bad thing. And so when we have doubts or when we hear about doubting Thomas, let us remember that he was so much more than a doubter. Rather, he was the one who needed to find things for himself needed to search for the truth, needed to believe not because of others had told him, but because he wanted to know the truth. And once he knows the truth, he goes all the way. As I said, we can trust others, but we should always make an effort to search for ourselves. In this way, let us be like Thomas in his dedication to Christ, in his desire to really know for himself this risen Lord that people talk about. I think Thomas really fits what Josh McDowell once said. He says, my heart cannot rejoice what my mind rejects. So, let our research or search begin. Open our hearts and let God see this doubt that we are keeping for a long time. I think he can deal with that. And he can take us as we are and can transform us where we say, my Lord, my God like Thomas. May God enable us to come to that stage and a place where we fully dedicated our life to him. Let us now sing mission praise number, <clears throat> number is up there at 857 I believe. I the Lord of sea and sky.
Let us pray together. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are God and Lord. Lord, who is big enough to take all our doubts and our questions and deal with them. We thank you for scriptures that we have in our hands and we can read uh, these scriptures, we can search, we can try to find things, we can yeah, affirm our faith through your word. We thank you for the for the, the liberty that we can come to you any time and in any place for any reason whether we are sad or whether we are happy. We can come and open our heart before you knowing that you will receive our requests. You will take our words and you will answer our prayers in your own time. We thank you that you have revealed to us your will and many times on our part as humans we tend to really uh, go away from your will and we do things in our own ways. We fail to understand your perfect will for us. But we know that your spirit is there to gently guide us and bring us back into your presence. We thank you for the privilege of praying for others. At this moment, Lord, we pray for so many people in this world who are disadvantaged, who are persecuted, who are discriminated against because of your race, because of their faith, because of their family background. <coughs> Lord, human pride and arrogance can inflict pain on people who are innocent. Innocent in the sense that they have not done anything personally and yet because of these things they are picked out and they are persecuted. We particularly pray for our brothers and sisters, sisters around the world who in faith are our brothers and sisters who suffer because they follow you, who suffer because they refused to deny their faith. Lord, we pray you have mercy upon them. We also pray for their persecutors and ask for your mercy upon them too. Help them to come to their sense and see the human side of people. We also pray for pe people who are caught up in conflicts. We pray for the people of Ukraine and Sudan. In Sudan there is so much political upheaval, so much uncertainty, people are displaced, running away from violence. Oh Lord, have mercy. Give them comfort and peace. Help those aid agencies who are trying to help the vulnerable and the poor. Grant them more patience and grace. We also pray for this country and people who are struggling because of the rising prices and, uh, uh, and energy prices and for uh, many other reasons. Their financial situation is not the way it used to be. And many struggle to find meal for the next day. Lord, we pray that you give wisdom and understanding to our uh, politicians and people who are in a position of making decisions. May they have a tender heart. May they look beyond themselves for the good of the people of this country. 
We pray for our congregation, those who are ill, those who are weak, those who are alone, those who have mental illness. Lord, we can't name them all, but we know that you know their names. And so we plead on their behalf and ask you to let your love surround them. May they come to know the tenderness and kindness that you have for them. Remove our doubts and make us strong. We ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord, for whose kingdom we work and for whose kingdom we are asked to contribute through our lives and through our resources. And for his name's sake, Lord, we pray that these gifts that are offered for your kingdom, these gifts may be multiplied and used for your glory alone. In Jesus' name, Amen. Let us conclude our service this morning and uh, after um, the, uh, the hymn benediction and uh, obviously may God's blessing, uh, we will have our AGM. So if we are able to, let us stand once again and uh, please and sing Mission Praise number uh, 624, I believe it is. Um, Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to thee. As you go from here, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the presence of the Holy Spirit continue to guard your hearts and your thoughts in Jesus Christ, now and always. Amen. Amen.